too many games. There's just too many games. There's just too many. Hey, I'm back from too many games. And there were a lot of games. And I bought some of them. And I bought some other stuff too. So today, I'm gonna dive in deep to all my pickups. There's one insane pickup that I got, as well as some really cool game stuff that I've been wanting for a while and some other really neat stuff too. So let's dive right in. So I'm gonna be doing this semi-chronologically, mostly just because the the craziest pickup is the last one. And uh, you know, kind of share my tale and my pro progression throughout too many games as far as my pickups go. So here we go. Starting off with the first pickup. Now I'm walking around, you know, I get in and I start walking around, I'm looking around, and I, I'm not really seeing anything initially that strikes me as like, oh, I gotta go here, until I saw the Limited Run Games booth. And I was really excited that they were there because I don't think I've ever seen them at a con before. Maybe I have, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But they had a ton of out of print stuff for their collection and one of the games that I absolutely had to have you guessed it yeah Shantae and the Pirate's Curse I had to get this collector's edition now that I have a switch I was really bummed out that I didn't get it and when I saw the prices online I was just I kinda just lost hope I was like there's no way I'm gonna be able to get this thing at a reasonable price so lo and behold I saw this thing and grabbed it and was just like, oh my god, is this for sale? And the woman who was at the Limited Run Games booth is like, yes, it's for sale. And I'm expecting like, oh, like 150 bucks or something. She shoots me back with 65. I could not break out my wallet fast enough. I basically paid the price that this was when it came out for this game. This is the collector's edition of, of I almost said Half Genie Hero, of Pirate's Curse. Honestly, this is a better collector's edition. Uh, this is probably the best limited run collector's edition in all honesty. This is, this blew me away. Let me show you what it's got. So first off, you've got the box. Now I complained before about these. I'm not a big fan of the cardboard boxes that limited run uses on the inside of their games, but for this, it kind of made sense. So what you've got here is uh, a facsimile of the original Game Boy Color Shantae cart. This is a gorgeous box. Uh, like, even the sh even the uh, limited run games is like shimmery, just like the old Game Boy Color games. Here's the back of the box. I mean, I'm just blown away at this. Now, here's the thing. You open it up and you think, oh goodness, it's got a Game Boy Color card. Well, it's fake. Um, you know, it's as real as it could look, but it is fake. And what's really cool is that, and I didn't realize this at the time, but it also comes with a little standee that you could put that game on, which is pretty neat. I haven't set it up yet. All right, so what else does it come with? Well, it comes with the soundtrack, which is Cool. It looks like it's the full soundtrack too. Uh, I already opened this up and reversed it, but this is the cover for the game. Uh, I, re I reversed it from the original. Uh, they give you a manual and the game. Of course, there's the inside. Then they give you some postcards. Bada bing. Shantae and Risky Boots. And. One of just Shantae. And then you get a cool poster. Double sided. One side has the original art from Pirate's Curse. Really cool. I don't know if I'm going to hang these up. And then Shantae and Risky Boots in their swimsuits. Pretty neat. So I am very, very, very okay with this collection, and I'm glad that they came out with it and that they released it to too many games, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get it. So when I say that this was at the beginning of the day, I'm pretty much accurate in that statement. It was 
probably about 2.30 to 3, somewhere around then, when we rolled in after waiting in line and whatnot. So the fact that I found this right away, I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm totally happy with anything else that happens at this point. And boy, does stuff happen at this point. So I'm walking around, and you guys know me, I love strategy guides for video games. I just love to collect them, I don't know what it is about them, but I love getting them on the cheap, they're very collectible, and there's not a huge market for them right now, like, it's slowly but surely starting to happen, which is unfortunate, but uh, it's kind of like one of those last things that, you know, people just don't care about because of game facts. So. Um, I got three strategy guides at Too Many Games. One, which is kind of in rough shape, is Killer Instinct 2. Uh, now, I could not find this one for sale on eBay for a decent price. I got this for 10 bucks. It doesn't come with a poster or anything, um, which I don't think it does to begin with anyways. But it is, uh, it does have some really cool art. It's got an interview with Rare which is super cool, there's Jago and Bjorkid and Fulgore, and uh, yeah, I haven't read the interview yet, but it's always really cool to, to get an interview with uh, the developers. Here's uh, some more characters. You know, you don't get to see a lot of this character art, and what was really cool is that they also included some art from the first game, which I thought was really neat. Here's some from the second game, there's Kim Wu and Maya fighting. Now this one's totally from the first game. This is Bjorkin and Jago, and then on the other side there's Fulgor blasting what looks to be Glacius or Idol? I don't know, I can't tell. But yeah, this is a really cool strategy guide. It's made by Game Fans, which was a great magazine back in the day. So I'm pretty stoked that I got this for $2 more than it actually sold for back in the day. So I'm okay with that. Now in that same area, I was able to bundle those two strategy guides together, so I got that one and this one. This is a really nice find. I've never seen this before. This is the Tomb Raider uh, Collector's Edition Guide. Now what this has, if you'll notice, is it's got Tomb Raider 1, Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3, Tomb Raider Last Revelation, and Tomb Raider Chronicles on there. It also has some information in the back uh, for some of the other games, like the Game Boy games. It's got a little bit of information. It's not really like a run-through or anything, but uh, it's, it's pretty neat that they, they covered the Game Boy Color games, which I talked about in full in my Tomb Raider trilogy review for the Game Boy. Game Boy Color? Yeah, Game Boy Color. So, I don't know. Link somewhere on the screen. Anyways. Uh, there's some really cool art in here too that I don't see that often. There's some model pinup stuff from back in like the day they used to have uh, actual like swimsuit models and stuff, uh, and Playboy models and actresses and stuff model for Lara Croft. So they have a bunch of art poses and stuff for that. And then at the very end, they have an interview with Angelina Jolie, which uh, is kind of weird. Uh, one of the reasons why I got this is to shrink down my collection. I had all five of these guides, like, full, and I'm gonna get rid of those and keep this one. So this was only ten bucks. It covers every single game. It doesn't get as super in-depth as the other guide does, obviously, because it's not as big. Uh, but it does handle, you know, like, if you're going through the game and you get stuck, you know, you can pretty much figure out where you're going, uh, thanks to that guide. So. Pretty cool, so I'm gonna be able to free up a little bit of space in my collection, which is desperately needed. Next up we have Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. This is on the 3DS. This guide I got for five dollars. Yeah, it was five dollars. And the thing is brand spanking new. And uh, you know, this game came out, what, two years ago? And to uh, have a strategy guide already be five bucks for it. You know, it's just, it's very telling that a lot of these uh, people have these guys priced super low because they just want to get rid of them. All right, before we jump over to the games, I figured I'd show off some art that I got. So I got this from my buddy Square Painter. He does some fantastic art. If you guys haven't seen my walls before, 
Uh, I have his art pretty much everywhere, and so I wanted to get a uh, another piece of his, and this one just really screamed out to me. Um, I wanted, he has a ton of stuff. Every time I see all of his stuff, I'm like, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. So instead of getting a big, big, big painting, I opted to get a smaller painting, which was still, I think I paid uh, 60 for this? 60? I can't remember, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's um, it's a good piece, and uh, I'm gonna go hang it up somewhere. Now, everybody who watches this channel, I think knows that I'm a pretty big fan of Samus and Tifa Lockhart. So, I actually found some really cool art that I wanted to show off. It's a little cheesecakey. This is done by a, I believe, like, brother and sister team if I recall. Uh, the guy that was selling it said it was his sister-in-law and I think brother. So, yeah. But they're both artists and they do really cool, phenomenal work. They also have these like aluminum versions and uh, this was one of the ones that you could have gotten an aluminum version of. Sorry, it's not really being picked up that well because of the background light, but uh, this is a really, really cool Samus montage. Um, you've got the Metroid in the corner, a couple Metroids all over the place. You've got Samus right there, you've got uh, Zero Suit Samus there, and then you've got uh, what looks to be some kind of space pirate. I can't even tell. It's You know what it looks like? It looks like a deflated Metroid, or like a dead Metroid. And then the other one I got, these I framed, by the way. Uh, so the other one I got was this one. So really cool Tifa poster that I thought was pretty awesome. So I'm glad to have these. I don't know where I'm gonna hang them up, but I will probably find a spot over by my little figure shrine area. I think that's probably the most appropriate place to put them. Uh, these were part of a deal that uh, my buddy Justin and I did. Uh, so it was four for 30. So we split it right down the middle. He got two uh, of whatever he got and then I got these two. So um, the frames themselves were cheap. I got them at Joann's for I think maybe 10 bucks each or something like that, 11 bucks each. And they're really nice frames. All right, but you don't care about that. You wanna see the games, right? Well. Here we go. I'm walking around, still trying to find a specific booth that I'm looking for called Mad Gear Games, I believe it's called. It's run by a dude called Carlton. Carlton's a pretty nice guy. And he deals specifically, exclusively with import games. Rare, hard to find imports. Every single year I've seen this guy at either Too Many Games or Retro World Expo, and I always ask him the same thing. Do you have Rolling Thunder? He goes, no. Do you have Mappy Kids? He said no. One of the reasons why I want both of those two games is because the Famicom versions have exclusive audio chips in them, and they're both probably the two best games that came out of uh, that run of Namco 163 chips. So I was lucky enough to find Rolling Thunder, and this one does have the exclusive extended audio chip in it. So I have the NES version of this game, but I wanted this one because of the different music. I paid 15, gladly, um, you know, to import this and to bring it in. Uh, it's probably gonna cost me around that same amount, so I was lucky to find this, and um, I was pretty happy with getting Just Rolling Thunder. Um, I really wanted to pick something up from Carlton. He almost always sells me something that I'm usually happy with. Now, my buddy Adam, Square Painter, he also, he and I were uh, having a conversation, talking, and I happen to have a uh, leftover Sega Genesis box, like an empty box that I got with a recent um, haul of stuff that I got that I've been kind of sifting through and reselling. And I wanted to see if anybody wanted it. And I was like, you know, let me ask Adam if he wants it. So I happened to ask him and he was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. And then he was like, actually, uh, we got to talking about PS2 games and the rising cost of PS2 games. And so he mentioned that he had a spare copy of The Warriors, which I didn't have. And he was like, do you want it? It's kind of water damage. I was like, 
I don't care, it's a free game. So he hooks me up with the Warriors on PS2. It does have, um, the case is, is pretty banged up. I mean, it's got like some water stretchiness going on right there. Uh, the insert itself, yeah, kind of water damage. Uh, the game looks fine. Uh, I didn't really see, I mean, it's got some light scratches, nothing that a, uh, nothing that a, a buffer won't fix. And then the manual is actually in really good shape. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Maybe at some point in time I'll find an insert, that'll be better. Uh, the back of the insert, by the way, totally fine. So it's just the front. I could live with that. It's a free game that a buddy of mine gave me, so. I'm very thankful. Now from there, I'm kind of walking around and I see this box, this giant container, and it had a bunch of different games in it, uh, most of which were going for pretty cheap prices, um, but what they did was they cut the prices in half. So if you saw a game for, I don't know, 10 bucks, it would be five bucks. If you saw a game for 20 bucks, it would be 10 bucks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I found a game that I had been wanting to find for a cheap price. Uh, because I used to own it and uh, with the upcoming release of Marvel Alliance 3 I wanted to pick up some of the old X-Men Legends games so I found X-Men Legends 1 and they had it labeled for 8 bucks but they also had it labeled here for $6.99 so I asked the guy I was like which one is the price I assumed the 8 and he was like he, he kind of laughed and he was like, do you want it for three? And I was like, yeah, I want it for three. So he's like, sure, take it for three. So X-Men Legends for three bucks, it's complete. It is the player's choice version, whatever. I'm kind of over being worried about that sort of stuff. Comes with the Nintendo thingy and uh, yeah, X-Men Legends. So I, I now have to find X-Men Legends 2, but I'm very okay with buying this for three bucks. You can't beat that price. So I'm continuing to walk and I find something that catches my eye and it is a copy of Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow for the Super NES. And I've been wanting this game for a while but it, the price that they had it at was kind of expensive, 30 bucks. And I was like, I'm not going to spend 30 bucks on it. But they had two other games that I wanted, one of which I'm not going to show you because it is part of the Patreon giveaway, um, which I'm doing, which I'll talk a little bit about on the end of this video. Uh, Battletoads. This is the game that kind of caught my eye. So this is not complete in box. It is a gorgeous box though, uh, which is in pretty good shape aside from the outside being a little dirty. There we go. No manual unfortunately, but the game is in okay shape. It's got those stupid stickers on them, unfortunately. And Battletoads for 40. We ended up doing a deal. I paid 40, but I got the $5 game, which is gonna be part of the giveaway that I'm doing uh, at the beginning of next month. So that's one of the games I I ended up, you know, kind of working in a deal to, to get. So yeah, Battletoads, 40 bucks can't be beat that you know it's a pretty good price I guess needs a manual but I, I it's really hard to find the box for this so I will find a manual at some point hopefully so I go over to the next booth and this is why you always walk the floor a few times before you start buying games because you you'll find something and then find it two rows down for half the price and that's exactly what happened with Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow uh, now this version unfortunately has uh, a pretty beat up label, uh, if you can tell. But look at the cost, it was 15 and uh, the back needs to be replaced with an actual like, you know, proper back that has the sticker and everything. But uh, he had this for 15 I talked him down to 10 I believe? So, and he was cool with it. He, you know, I said, hey, it's got some label damage, can you give it to me for 10 He was like, yeah, sure. So uh, I got the game that I wanted, which is really cool. Next up is a game that has eluded me for a while. It is a fun little puzzle platform game that I've kind of known about for a while, but I never actually picked up. And that is Adventures of Cookie and Cream. 
and this game, you know, PS2 is kind of on the rise, so I wanted to start going back and getting some of the more unknown PS2 games that people don't really talk about that often. So this is a complete inbox copy, and it's in pretty good shape. The manual's got a little bit of a snag uh, there in the middle, uh, like a little tear, but uh, disc-wise, yeah, could use a buffer. This game is a From Software game, so those of you who know From Software, was it Dark Souls, right? Yeah. This was 10 bucks, and uh, I think I talked him down to either five or eight. I can't remember. I think it was five. Uh, yes, it was. It was five because I bundled this with the Luigi's Mansion guide, the Luigi's Mansion 2 guide. So, um, you know, some people just looking to get rid of stuff and give it away. And I got this on Saturday, which is, you know, pretty cool because Saturday usually you still find that people don't really want to budge on prices, but this guy wanted to. So I'm glad I have this one in my collection for the first time. I saw another booth and they had a game that was reasonably priced, uh, pretty much on par with what you could get at the game stores, but because I like finding things and I prefer finding things in the wild, I opted to just get it there after kind of negotiating a little bit on price. And that is Valis 3. So the tag says 30, I paid 25 for it. I cannot tell you how much fun I had with this, it was a blast. I played this on a EverDrive that my friend Eric brought over once and I was just scrolling through games and I, I saw Valis 3 and I was like oh I know the Valis series I have the first one on the Genesis and I played some of them I have Super Valis 4 on the Super NES that one's pretty fun but uh, this one was phenomenal I was really drawn into this one uh, you can play as three different girls all of which have different abilities one of which I think has a whip so it was very Castlevania-ish for this one. So uh, track it down when you can. Valis 3, 25 bucks. That's, uh, that's a fair price. I'm okay with that. I, I really wish I got the box and the manual as well, but it, it's just driving up the price of the game, and I really just wanted to play the game. One more little piece of art that I wanted to show off. Uh, somebody was selling this really cool Daisy sticker, so I thought it was appropriate uh, because, you know, I like Daisy. Daisy! Cool little sticker. It was a dollar, I think. Two dollars? Probably put it on my laptop. So, I have been kind of trying to find this. So, I have been trying to find this game for the price that I wanted to pay for this specific port for a while. Now, generally, when I do multi platform on systems, I go Nintendo. Just my personal preference. Uh, as long as there's no major, major downside to getting it, like, for example, um, I don't know, like, you don't have half the characters or whatever. So, X-Men Next Dimension, I've been diving deep into superhero games, again, because of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 coming out in July. So, I wanted to check out some older X-Men games, and X-Men Next Dimension hit that X spot. It, uh, I don't know, X marks the spot, I don't know. X pun. <laughs> so this this a fighter. It's a continuation of the Mutant Academy games. Uh, this came out on the Xbox, the PS2, and the GameCube. So I remember picking this up back in the day for the GameCube, and I have so much nostalgia for this game. I played the crap out of this, and I really, really enjoyed it, even though it wasn't the best fighter. So when you have a GameCube, you have kind of limited options for what you want to go with when it comes to decent fighters, um, other than like Smash Brothers and, you know, the um, Capcom versus SNK2 EO. Um, there's a couple, there's a handful of others, but uh, this one, I don't know, I just really, really enjoyed it. They were selling it for eight, I talked them down to five, I believe. So I saved a couple bucks off of that price. Uh, this one in stores usually right now is going for like nine, ten bucks. So I saved basically like you know half or whatever. I don't even know what it's worth, but uh, I don't really care because I just wanted it in my collection. I heard about this game Trick Style for the Dreamcast, and I do not like to collect Dreamcast games without manuals, but. Uh, I saw this at a couple different booths and the prices were all over the place. Some people wanted 12, some people wanted 13, some people wanted, 
I don't know, eight or whatever. So I finally found it for five dollars, according to that sticker. But they had it in a glass case, so all I saw was this. I didn't see this. So I asked the guy, I was chit-chatting with, with them, and they were really nice. And so the guy pulls it out of the glass case, hands it to me, and as soon as I saw the manual, I was just like, okay, never mind, I'm, I'm all set. And he's like, why, what, what, what's wrong with it, what's wrong? And I was like, there's no manual. Like, I, I generally don't collect CD games or CD-based games without a manual. And so he goes, he goes, all right, two bucks. And I was like, I'm gonna be honest with you, and this is not to offend you, but it is going to be more of an effort for me to get a manual for this thing. And so it's just not worth it to me to spend the two bucks to then have to go grab a manual. And he was like, all right, just take it. He was like, I want you to have it. And he was being sincere. Uh, like, I'm, I'm, I may come off as like him just being like, oh, you're fine, just get out of my face. No, he was legitimately like, well, you know what? You know, it's clear that you want it, take it. And I was like, no, I, it's really okay. Like, I was really kind of taken aback by, by it. And, you know, I, I didn't want to be rude. Um, and he was very insistent. He was like, do not hand it back to me. Um, I'm trying to get rid of stuff. Just take it. It's two bucks we're talking about. I'm not that worried about it. You're right. It doesn't have a manual. It's take it. So, you know, I shook his hand and um, he gave me the game. So now I got to track down a manual for Trick Style. So if anybody uh, has a spare manual, hook me up. So that does it for the games. But I have one more pickup for you. One more. One. But in order to show it to you, I have to move. All right, so I figured I would tell my tale first before I show this to you because it is really cool and I don't splurge that often for stuff like this, but I saw this and just knew I had to have it and almost like preserve it, if you will. Like I saw it and was like, I'm never gonna see this thing again. I have to own it. So I'm walking around the sales booths and this is going to be really hard to say what it is without actually telling you uh, to try to build up momentum here, but uh, I found a promotional item for a game, for three different games all in the same franchise. And I thought that they were all pretty cool, but this one in particular really stood out to me and I was like, that is so, so cool. So I asked, are these for sale? And he said, yes they are. He said, but they're priced intentionally high because I don't want to sell them. I just, I'm like, I'm kind of like, why did you bring them then? But anyways, so I am chit-chatting with the guy, really nice guy. Uh, I believe his name is Louie. And Louie and I are, are chit-chatting about uh, the, the promotional item that I'm about to show you. And uh, so he tosses me out a price. And it's about $100 less than his starting price. And I tried to beat him down more, you know. Um, I went $50 lower, you know, no. I, walked, I was like, all right, I'll be back. I came back maybe 20 minutes later with a little bit higher of a price, uh, knocked it up another 30, no go. He was like, I'm getting this or I'm not taking, or I'm taking it home. It's like, all right, fair enough. So I went back, uh, but his booth was already closed and he said he'd be there Sunday, so I knew I'd go, be able to go back Sunday. So Justin and I return right before we leave, like right before we leave. And I'm like, I'm gonna go back. I think I might buy this thing. So I'm talking to the guy and uh, we're chit-chatting again and Justin's like, all right man, now or never, what's the deal? Are you gonna buy it, are you gonna buy it? And I'm like, <sighs> I was like, it's so much money, but it's one of those things that I'm never gonna see again. Like it's just so incredibly rare. So we flipped a coin. And guys, uh, heads was I buy it, tails was I don't, and I walk away. And I think you know that I got heads. And here it is. I just can't believe that I own this thing. And I am gonna have to struggle to find a place to put it, but I have, I'm just so happy to have this. It is one of those things 
that you will never ever see because standees, promotional standees, are not really being protected. Um, they are kind of going away. Um, a lot of them have been thrown out or gotten rid of or destroyed by giant companies like GameStop and Toys R Us and Sears and all those types of companies. They just toss this stuff. So the fact that this one was saved and that it is now part of my collection is just awesome. So my Metroid Prime standee has a new friend. So that's it guys, that is my pickups for Too Many Games 2019. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you guys got anything decent, what you got. And if you have videos, feel free to plug them here for the pickups that you have. Uh, one more thing that I figured I'd mention, the promo for the Patreon is going to include a giveaway. Anybody who is donating a dollar or more gets thrown into this. Uh, basically, toss some names in a hat. You could be an old patron, you could be a new patron, does not matter, you're all equal. And you get tossed into a hat and then we pick uh, three names from the hat. Right now there's nine patrons, so you have a really good shot at securing one of the games and then there's the too many games uh, Animal Crossing shirt that I'm giving away as well that's the grand prize and then there's two other games one is a PlayStation 1 game which is worth about ten dollars and the other is a Sega Genesis game worth about five dollars so I hope you guys check that out again the link will be down below Anyways, thanks for watching, and stay tuned. More on the way.